Welcome to the Swim Upstream podcast, where we talk about intentional living against cultural norms. If you're ready to break out of survival mode and cultivate a more intentional life, then you're in the right place. Find your courage to live differently and swim upstream. Let's get started. Hey y'all, this is the Swim Upstream podcast and you're listening to Jenny Veliki episode 13, The Plastic Free Kitchen, More Than Saving the Turtles. Now before we get into this week's episode, we have a little feature we do every week called What I'm Learning This Week. And this week I want to tell you about a new product that I discovered called Misfits Market. This may be something that you've seen an ad for on Facebook or on Instagram, and it intrigued me enough that I tried it. So Misfit Market is a company that gathers ugly and seconds produce. It could be that the company, um, the farmer has too few or too many of a particular fruit or vegetable. It could be that they're too small or too large. It could be that there are small cosmetic blemishes on the produce itself. But all of this produce is non-GMO, organic, fresh fruits and vegetables. And you can choose from two size boxes. And the box that I got has between eight, has around 18 pounds of food in it. You can also do a box that has around 12 pounds of food in it. Um, The larger 18 pound box is normally $40. I was able to get it with a discount code and I also have a discount code for you this week. If you'd like to know more about Misfits Market, go ahead and click the link in my profile and that will be a referral link. You can get 30% off of your first box between now and Saturday. Um, If you put it in after Saturday, you'll still get 25% off. But if you do it by Saturday, you'll get 30% off by Saturday, July the 4th. And then that gives me a 50% credit on my next box. It is a subscription, but it's a subscription without commitment. You can choose to do a weekly, a bi-weekly. You can pause your subscription for up to six months. You can cancel it um, without any minimums or contracts. So check out Misfits Market um, in the show notes and order you some produce. It comes straight to your door. It is environmentally packaged and it's just a great deal. It's about 40% off what you would pay in the grocery store. Misfits Markets. Check it out in the show notes. So this week we are talking um, about the kitchen again. Back in the kitchen and this week we're talking about how to work towards a plastic free kitchen. This is more than saving the turtles y'all. So first why would we want to go plastic free? What's the motivation behind it? And two what are some alternatives to plastics in the kitchen? Now again, you guys know that what I like to do is share what I'm doing, what's important to me, to give you pause and to make you think through an area of your life that you might not have thought about before. I do not assume and do not encourage that you automatically choose the same thing I did, but I want to give you the resources and the information so that you can make an educated decision for yourself. You may decide to do something completely different after this episode. But this is an issue that I think affects all of us in a lot of different ways. And I think it seems to be such a big issue that it's hard to know where to start. So I thought the best place for us to start would be in a place that brings the most impact and also is one of the easier ones to practically apply. So let's talk about why would we want to consider reducing the plastic in our kitchen? There's a link in the show notes to a very long article from The Guardian. 
Normally, I tend to post things that are short and simple and easy to understand because I know research is not usually a fun thing to do for most people and long technical articles get very boring very quickly. But I really encourage you to read this article that I'm going to link in the show notes from The Guardian. It really helps you understand why everyone is reducing plastics right now and why there's so much talk about the amount of plastics in our environment and why it's important to reduce that load of plastics. That article will take you all the way through the history of plastics, how it came about, the problems that began happening, the different ways that they tried to address those problems through the years. And it it will shine a light on how plastic products were the beginning of the disposable consumer age where products were made for the rubbish bin, literally, because they were making products that were lighter and cheaper and disposable so that you wouldn't have to pay as much for them and so they could produce more of them. So from the beginning, plastics have been made to be thrown away, but plastics have never been made where they decompose well. And so that's always been an issue. Um, At one point, we felt like recycling was the answer, but it's sadly not. Less than 10% of all plastics are recyclable in our nation. And of those recyclable plastics, they have a limited recyclability. A plastic water bottle cannot be melted down and made into a new plastic water bottle. It it decomposes, not, not decomposes, but it erodes the quality of the material to melt it down and use it again. And so it has to be made for something that's not as strong as a water bottle, like being wove into fabrics. Um, as some of the microplastics that would be found in your polyesters and your spandex and your nylons and things like that. So, and then it would reach the end of its life. That would not be a recyclable thing to make into something new. So, it, it really has come to a thing where our earth is really overloaded with the amount of plastics that we're producing And clearly there needs to be some kind of response and we can't continue at the rate that we're going with consuming plastic products and throwing them away. And so change needs to happen somewhere. And um, as a Christian, I believe in being a good steward of the creation and the things that God has given us dominion over. And I think that one of our responsibilities is in caring for the earth And that includes being responsible for how we treat it. And so for me, especially, um, I really wanted to see what my part in it was. What could I do to reduce my, as, as the phrase goes now, my carbon footprint? Well, how could I reduce the amount of waste and trash and garbage that I produce as an individual and we think that that's a drop in the bucket but many drops become a bucket and many buckets become an ocean so when one person makes small change it doesn't make a lot of good but when lots of people make small change we can really create a wide amount of change over time so Also, um, by reducing our plastic, of course, it's it's impossible to go completely plastic-free because plastics are in everything. There's plastics woven into our clothing. There's plastics used to seal tea bags. There's plastics um, used as adhesives in different ways. Um, Over half of your car is made of plastic. There's lots of places where plastics really can't be replaced with something similar. But if we focus on the things that we are able to change and the things that we can figure out an alternative for, lots of times those alternatives are longer lasting and more durable. 
And that reduces our consumerism overall, where we're not buying so much and bringing in so much, which will eventually lead to our discussion about consumerism as a whole and minimalist and the minimalism movement. And so that'll be something coming up in a future episode, not too far down the line. But for right now, I want you to think about how reducing our consumption of plastics, refusing things that are plastic, uh, looking for alternatives to those really influences the businesses that create those products because really they're worried about their bottom line. And if we're not buying those things or if we're buying a different alternative that's made from alternative uh, materials, they're going to take notice of that and they're going to adapt and change according to what the consumers are demanding with their dollars. Also, when we reduce the plastic consumption, we're reducing the oil and fossil fuel consumption as well. And that really helps fight against global warming, which is an even bigger issue than plastic production is. Plastic production is part of that bigger issue issue of global warming and global warming feels like something that we don't really have a grasp on what it is and and what change would mean and how that change would happen that's something that's a little harder to wrap our our minds around and wrap our heads around and be able to come up with definitive changes but when you look at plastic production that's something that we can grasp because it's something we see and touch and feel and deal with on a daily basis. So, (coughs) excuse me. So, let's talk about how to work towards a plastic-free kitchen. And again, I say plastic-free in quotation marks because as I said, it's going to be virtually impossible to go completely plastic-free But how are we going to reduce that load as much as we possibly can? Number one is to not let it in to begin with. As much as possible, pay attention to packaging. There's a lot of different companies who are doing small changes right now. Barilla Pasta recently decided that they're no longer going to put the little plastic window pane in the front of their pasta boxes anymore. So just choosing a brand of pasta that's a complete cardboard box rather than a cardboard box with a little plastic window. Little things like that really do make a difference. The things that you buy, if it's wrapped in plastic, is there an alternative? Is there one that's wrapped in paper? Is there one that comes loose that doesn't have packaging at all? Look at those kinds of things. Is it excessively wrapped? Um, I know I was at the grocery store the other day and they had red and bell, green bell peppers and yellow and orange. They had the four colors and each individual pepper was wrapped in its own sealed cellophane bag. And it just dumbfounded me because I'm like, what's wrong with it just being a pepper? <laughs> And right beside it are zucchini that are not wrapped at all. And they just have a little sticker on them that tells you what the code is. And all of these peppers had those stickers. But they were each individually wrapped in a little cellophane bag. So pay attention to packaging. Where can you put your money where your mouth is? And vote with your dollars for packaging that is more friendly to the environment. And contains less plastic maybe it's that you buy something that comes in a cardboard box instead of in shrink wrap or in a plastic clamshell Um, maybe it's that you buy something that you can put in your own bag Um, think about those kinds of things don't let it in to begin with by paying attention to the packaging also look for ways that you can do reusable things um there is a huge trend right now for silicone Ziploc bags that are heavy duty and reusable and washable and can be used over and over and over and over again. And they're a great replacement to disposable Ziploc bags. 
and there are even reusable produce bags that are made of a lightweight mesh material and have a drawstring at the top that you can throw those in with your reusable shopping bags and take them with you to the grocery store and put your produce in those and use those instead of the plastic ones that they have at the grocery store. Small simple changes like that add up over time. You can also refuse plastic bags at the store when it's time to pay. Um, today I bought a bucket of ice cream and a small container of alum because I'm about to make pickles and a stick of deodorant and she wanted to take all those things and put them in a plastic bag and I just asked her I was like can I just carry my ice cream and then I could carry the other two products with me um, so how many times are you buying a small thing that you could say no thanks I don't need a bag I appreciate it and just carry it out of the store with you um, how many times are we putting things in way too many bags where we could put more in one bag if we would um, pack it ourselves I at first did not like the you scan shopping areas in the grocery store or at Walmart and now I appreciate them because I have control over what put, gets put in a bag and what doesn't and I can bring my own bags and I can pack it the way I want to and it's just one more way that I have a little bit more control over what I'm using instead of using the plastic bags you can bring canvas tote bags you can have paper grocery bags that you either use theirs or you bring them from home and reuse them again you could have um, any of the reusable shopping bags make sure they're really sturdy because a lot of those do have plastics in them so make sure it's a good sturdy bag um, I tend to be given several bags um, over the course of the year from different companies and things like that who are doing promos and giveaways and and I end up with one or two here or there to replace the ones that I've used to the end of their life um, you can also use a box when I go to Sam's or when I or Costco or to Aldi I try to grab a box and put a lot of my food in that and that's great because I can put all the pantry stuff in one box all the produce stuff in one box and it makes it a lot easier to unload the groceries when I get home and put things away so pay attention to what you're bringing in and as much as possible don't bring it in if you can help it number two don't dump your plastics and buy new things a lot of people will say well I have a cabinet full of Tupperware what do I do with it use that Tupperware until it wears out and then as it wears out replace it with an alternative a stainless steel food container a a Pyrex dish mason jars um, we have moved from storage wear and Tupperware to Pyrex slowly over time um, and also when you're looking at replacing the things that you have maybe you have someone who's just starting out who would appreciate those things and if you have the ability to go ahead and buy replacements who do you know that could use those things who would appreciate them and use them to the end of their life um, and give them away to people that you know that would be blessed by them um, we also will save um, what we have and just just use it until it's not usable anymore which we'll talk about more in our next point but storage wear and Tupperware can be replaced with Pyrex serving spoons and utensils we have largely gotten rid of most of our plastics we do have a couple that um, are plastic but they're pampered chef and they're very sturdy they're not cheap and flimsy and they're not going to fall apart anytime soon so I will use them until they reach the end of their life um, but we have lots and lots of of wood and metal serving spoons and utensils our cups and dishes are primarily glass ceramic and steel 
we have um, the Corelware dishware. We have, we drink mostly out of mason jars or out of coffee cups. Um, and we have a set of the metal enamelware dishes that were from camping that we use if the kids are going to eat outside or if we're packing a lunch for the car, things like that. We have a set of those that we can bring with us rather than bringing disposables. And there, we don't worry about them being broken. We don't worry about them um, being chipped or being delicate. We can be rough with them um, and we can take them out and about and then bring them home and wash them. And we, we have a little cooler bag that we keep them in until we need them the next time. Um, and we also have a set of silverware that we keep in the car um, to reduce our amount of single-use silverware while we're out and about. Um, glass measuring cups and spoons. Um, I have the Pyrex glass measuring cups for liquids, and I have stainless steel varieties for, for the um, things that are not liquid, like sugars and flowers and things like that um, and the same with the measuring spoons the great thing is you'll you'll pay more in the beginning for stainless steel with measuring cups and spoons but they will last so much longer they're not going to be stained they're not going to have the little markings on there that tell you what size that that cup or spoon is wear off over time we have an old plastic set that we're we're down to like two pieces of and um i just know that one of them is a certain measurement you can't read it on there anymore because it's worn off over time but i know what measurement that particular spoon is so having stainless steel it's usually engraved right into it it's not going anywhere it's going to stay there over time um, Ziplocs can be replaced by putting the same things into Pyrex or into mason jars for the most part. I do still use Ziploc bags in my freezer. Um, and I tend to use them more than once. And I'll wash them out and reuse them again. Um, but we use them primarily for produce that we we buy at the grocery store that's on the seconds rack in the produce or when we have a lot of something and we need to um, preserve it right away we had a lot of ripe bananas this week that I peeled and broke into chunks and put into a ziploc bag to put in the freezer but we'll use those bags again and again and again and again and then when they seem to be a little bit worn out they go into a tub next door kitty litter and they get used as a scoop bag and then they're thrown away um, plastic wrap we've replaced that with beeswax wraps or with cloth napkins if we're gonna go take our lunch somewhere and or eat while we're out and we're packing a lunch um, we use cloth napkins instead of paper napkins and it's really simple to wrap the sandwiches in those cloth napkins or in beeswax wraps especially if they need to be chilled because the beeswax will keep um, the sandwich from getting soggy um, but if you do it in a cloth napkin if it's just like a peanut butter and jelly or something that um, you're going to eat pretty quickly and don't need to keep it chilled um, then it's great to put it inside the napkin because then you have a napkin to use as well and you didn't have to pack that as an additional thing so don't dump and buy new replace as you go as you as you use up these things as they reach the end of their life and they're not useful anymore these are the things you can replace them with I will also say that when you're going and choosing your alternatives I really encourage you to look and buy secondhand when possible um, one, it's significantly cheaper. Two, there's a lot of good stuff 
to be found secondhand, whether it's Facebook Marketplace or at your local thrift store. Um, you can find lots of great glassware, Pyrex pieces, um, stainless steel water bottles and travel mugs, things like that. Um, at your local thrift store for much much cheaper than you will pay for them new there is a whole business category of people who are taking advantage of this trend and producing all these eco-friendly products but if you're if if eco-friendly is causing you to purchase more things and to add to what you already have it's kind of counterintuitive. You want to use what you have first. And then as that wears out or runs out, replace it with a better alternative. When you know better, you do better. Okay, last but not least, we make it a rule that there is no such thing as single-use plastics in our house. We use it again and use it again and use it again. Even if it's something that's marketed as a single-use product. For example, if we have a party and we have disposable cups at our party, we may save as many of those as possible and wash them and reuse them until they get cracks in them and then we throw them away. Um, when we get takeout and they automatically put silverware um, plastic silverware in our bag with our takeout we save those in a jar in the pantry um, when we get takeout and it comes in containers that are plastic we will wash those containers and reuse them until we can't use them anymore we have a whole tub of containers out in the garage um, and we keep them in the garage because we tend to use them for out of the ordinary things so that we're not in the habit of using plastics all the time so um, we have for example if I buy lunch meat and it comes in one of those little plastic storage container tubs when we're done with that lunch meat I'll wash it I'll put it in that container in the garage and then maybe we have a friend over and they want some of the leftovers of what we've served for dinner while they're there. I can send them home with something. I can send them home with a piece of dessert. I can pack meals to give to friends um, who've had a baby or who are sick. And I can use these containers and not worry them with washing them and returning them to me. Um, it makes it really, really easy to give things away. Um we even have saved the clamshells that, for example, the muffins come in at the store um, on the occasions that we've bought store-bought muffins rather than making our own. And recently we did that and we had one in the pantry and we hosted a big family birthday about a week or so ago for all the family birthdays from March through June. Um... And I was able to send cupcakes home with a family member because I had that muffin clamshell to send it home in. So, rethink every kind of container that, that comes in your house and say, what can I use this for again? I bought mushrooms on Markdown last week and got five containers of mushrooms. And I've been using those containers washed them reused them I'll use them as a trash bowl when I'm doing food prep um, and dump it into the compost bin rinse it out use it again um, I've used it to carry treats out to the chickens um, I'll use them to gather up produce from the garden in the mornings um, we got a chicken fajita kit from Costco a couple months ago and I've been using those big black plastic trays that came with it to put food in for my chickens. That's been their feeder bowl out in the chicken coop for the last several weeks. We graduated to a feeder system this weekend, but I'm still using them to hold all of our cucumbers in one spot in the refrigerator. 
until I make pickles. So rethink single-use plastics. Use it again, use it again, use it again. As I said, Ziploc bags will reuse for the kitty litter box. When we scoop, we have, um, instead of buying grocery ba garbage bags to put that in, or kitty litter bags, or pet waste bags, we are using plastic shopping bags, bread bags, plastic wrap that things come in that is a bag shape um, that's packaging that we can't avoid or um, old Ziploc bags things like that it doesn't even need to be something that closes it just needs to be something that can hold the kitty litter and then my daughter that is in charge of that will either tie it off or zip it closed and we're reusing it um, more than once before it ends up in the garbage uh, plastic jugs and bottles uh, we have two Arizona tea jugs that are one gallon each that we use to make lemonade and tea over and over and over again in those same containers we have other jugs and bottles that we save all through the year and twice a year I do what's called the winter sewing method of our gardening where you cut all the way almost all the way around the bottle and open it up create some vent holes in the bottom fill it with some dirt and some seeds tape it shut and leave it outside it creates a little mini greenhouse effect and it's a great way to start seeds especially if you don't have room in your home to put seedlings under grow lights a lot of what is in my garden this year was grown using the winter sewing method and I will post a link to my friend Cheryl Mann's YouTube channel where she explains winter sewing she has lots and lots of videos on there that help you understand how that works um, so if you're interested in that click the link in the show notes for that um, and that's one of many ways that we use bottles and jugs that are left over um, also water bottles disposable single-use water bottles that you buy by the case in the store are a huge source of waste having a water bottle that you can refill over and over and over again is a much better alternative having that water bottle be made of glass or stainless steel is an even better alternative um, they're less likely to develop cracks they're more likely to be durable for a much longer time. Um, the glass bottles that I have primarily have a silicone sleeve around them to keep them from breaking or chipping. And I tend to use those at home and I use my stainless steel bottle when I go out. Um, so those are just lots of different ways you can take something that's meant to be single use and use it again and again and again. So... We've talked about not letting it in to begin with. We've talked about don't dump it and buy new. Go ahead and reuse it until its life is over. And we've talked about reducing single plastic use plastics. So let's go back and think about our tools that we talked about in episode two. Number one, stop and think. How much do I bring in? How much plastics am I consuming? Um really a big part of this is just being aware of how high our consumption is you don't realize how much you're using until you start paying attention to it so how much am I bringing in and how can I find an alternative what would be a better use than this plastic thing that I'm using now then do your research read the article um, that I posted from the Guardian um, look up alternatives to the things that you specifically use on a regular basis that are plastic and then choose one thing to swap out or one habit to change I don't recommend that you try doing all these things at once um, I do one thing until I can do it well and then I add something else um, I started using stainless steel straws about five years ago 
and I know that when I first got my stainless steel straws in the mail I posted a picture of it on Facebook and people were going what are those why do you need a straw that you use again what's that for how do you clean it and now reusable straws are really really common um and that's something that just has become an integrative part of my life and I don't even think about my straw anymore it's just there um, now I'm starting to try to use reusable produce bags which is great when I'm pulling stuff from the garden but I'm having trouble remembering to bring it with me to the grocery store so that's my small step right now and then adding small steps over time really produces a lot of change and the smaller the more small steps you make the more you see that you could change next um, you can change the shopping bags that you use the produce bags um, you can see if you can go without plastic wrap that was a change that we made at the beginning of the year and I've been really surprised that I haven't felt a need to buy any um, and here it is almost the first of July and it has I have not missed it as much as I thought I would um, and then after you've researched and you stopped and thought you researched you chose your one thing to swap out or change a habit of then the last step and the most important is to stay true to you stick to your own convictions when you see it in one place it's going to open up your eyes to seeing it all over the place um like I said, one small change is going to lead to another small change, which is going to lead to another small change, which is going to lead to another small change. Um, I started thinking through plastics after I started thinking through chemical-free kit cleaning that we talked about last week. It was one of many changes that um, I stopped and thought about um, when I was sick, trying to do things that would make me... Um, a healthier environment to live in and thrive in so be aware that when you see it one place it's going to open up all kinds of other places but take it slow take it one thing at a time and stick to your convictions just because your aunt judy buys a mega box of straws disposable straws once a month doesn't mean that you have to use those straws when you go to her house or that you need to convince her to use stainless steel straws you're going to need to lead by example not by preaching so quietly using your stainless steel straw over time will have people asking you questions why are you doing that know why you're doing something know what your conviction is know why it's your conviction and be able to explain it to someone well and that is really when you're going to feel the courage to swim upstream to live a little differently than other people live because you stopped and think you researched you made a small change and you decided to be who you really are now